Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Nicole and this is Devon Lee Design Studio and today we are here for block D in our A to Z quilt block challenge that we're doing for 2023. This is the nine inch size one. It is called Ducks and a Duckling but we also have on our cutting sheet for a 14 inch one as well which is a little bit bigger. All right so let's get started. and welcome back to the channel thank you for taking some time out of your day and clicking on this video as I said in the intro we are making the ducks and duckling blocks we are working with triangles today so throughout the video there will be tips and tricks on how to feed them through your sewing machine so we don't get wonky blocks and as while we're talking about tips and tricks and all the things that you need everything that you need for this video is linked up down below including the cutting instructions you just need to click on that open it up print it off and you're away to go so without further ado let's get into making the block okay so today we're here to make the duck and duckling block so you can see that here and you need three different types of fabrics uh, again I have just dived into my um, scrap bin and pulled out some fabrics that I thought went well together my uniformed fabric or my common theme throughout the blocks is the background fabric that you can see here and that is just a tone on tone white fabric all right so um, as you can see you will also need your cutting sheet and the link is for that down below and um, you just open that up and it's got the blocks there for a 14 inch block and a 9 inch block okay and it's also got the layout instructions there as well um, and that is just a visual for you okay so once you have all your uh, fabrics that you've decided, you need to follow your cutting instructions. You'll need a few extra um, bits and pieces today. So before you cut your fabrics, because we are working with triangles, you really do want to starch or um, use best press or some sort of um, spray that you can just put a little bit more stability in those triangles you're going to need something to mark the back of some of your squares you're going to need a rotary cutter obviously you're going to need thread snips for your sewing machine and of course you're going to need some pins and my favorite pins for nesting are the fork pins and of course you're going to need a variety of different rulers so you'll need something to square up um, you'll also need um, something that you can square up your little half square triangles and whatnot all right so i'm just going to set that out the side you're also going to need your sewing machine obviously and also an iron and an ironing pad all right so the next thing that we're going to do is once you have um, cut your large squares, so you have uh, four green squares now I'm working I've already made my nine inch one okay so I am actually working for the 14th inch one okay so we have four green squares that we need to cut and they are three and five eighths and then we're going to take that square and we are going to cross cut that so we will cut that corner to corner and what that will do, do is yield two triangles and as you have four squares you will yield eight triangles now for our large red square which is a six and a half inches what we need to do for that is the same thing we just need to cut two squares and then we will cross cut those and so we end up yielding four triangles okay so your six and a half on on the 14 um inch one is uh six and a half is the red one and then these green ones are three and five eighths okay and there's four of those so you want to have eight triangles now be careful not to mix them up with your other green squares which are three and a quarter okay so just set them make sure that they're well away from these before you go and cross cut all right so these squares here these three and a quarter squares these are our little squares here that are between our bigger triangles okay so we'll just set them aside for a moment now that we've cross cut our um, large squares and our green ones we can set them aside for a moment and then we're going to take our final two squares which in my case are four inches and if you're using the nine inch measurements then they're three inches on the back of your white fabric you're going to actually draw a line and then right sides together you're going to place your fabrics on top of one another okay you're going to align all your raw edges up and you'll do the same with the other one 
and it doesn't matter which way the diagonal is going because we're just going to be making half square triangles okay so then what you're going to do is on either side of this line you are going to uh, stitch a quarter inch so I line my quarter inch foot up right along that edge of the uh, presser foot and then that way I know that I'm getting a nice quarter inch seam and then I do the same going back the other way Okay, so once you've done that you're going to clip them apart and on the diagonal line you're going to take your rotary cutter and you're going to cut the two apart okay and this will yield our four half square triangles okay and then I'm just going to press those open okay so now that we have sewn our half square triangles together we've pressed them open we need to square them up so now we grab our little ruler and I love working with this ruler here it only has the one line on it makes it super easy and we're going to square these up to three and a quarter so I pop on my uh, ruler on top of my half square triangle and I lay that 45 degree angle onto the seam and I'm just sort of going to center it and I'm going to try and take an even amount off all the way around okay and we need to square this up to uh, three and a quarter all right so let's take that little bit off and you can see there I'm just taking a little bit of a smidgen off so I've left enough in there um, for you to square up and um, as I've said before in past videos if you're not comfortable with half square triangles yet just make the squares that you need for the half square triangles a little bit bigger and then that will give you plenty of wiggle room all right so now that I've cut that I've turned it around and I've got two nice clean cut edges here now I'm going to line up my ruler on the three and a quarter mark okay while maintaining that a 45 degree angle on my seam okay and you can see there I'm taking a little bit extra so I've added enough in here for you to um, trim it up so to three and a quarter and then I'm just going to repeat that with the remainder Okay, so now that we've squared those up, we are making our next component. So you're going to take one of your half square triangles and we're going to add the green triangles onto them. Okay, so we want our point of our triangle to go towards the red and you can see that our triangle is slightly bigger. This is to allow for our quarter inch seam. So basically what will happen is they will overlap and it means that we'll have a nice quarter inch. You can see there by them overlapping we will have a quarter inch seam allowance left and that means that we won't lose our point off our little duckling. All right, so let's start by grabbing our half square triangles and some pins and we're going to line up our raw edges. Now remember that you want it to be going past. This is absolutely correct if you've got excess fabric going past. All right, this is our seam allowance. I can't stress that enough. Do not cut those bits off because we need them to create our um, seam allowance. Now, all I'm going to do here is basically add one triangle onto each side. I'm going to put a pin into the side that I'm going to be stitching on. I'm being very mindful that this top raw edge and this side edge where I'm going to be sewing is lining up and is even. And I just lay each one out and add my triangle on. Now that we've got our little triangles on there, we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch this down. And you may need a leader cloth for this because sometimes in my machine, it gives me a bit of grief. So I'm just going to have a leader cloth and with a needle in the down position, I'm going to put my square end, so this bit here underneath the, the needle and then I will just continue to sew down using my quarter inch seam allowance. OK, 
Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to remove your pins and then we're going to press our seams open and I just finger press it at this point and then I'll run the iron over it. Okay. Okay, so you can see here that we've got all our bits um, with our little green triangle on it and we've definitely got a quarter inch up here and now we're going to add our next piece on. So each piece goes in the same direction okay and then this piece here is going to go on so we line up our raw edges and pop a pin in the side that we're going to be stitching on okay and you repeat that and then we'll chain piece them through just as we did with the other one Okay, so now we have our little components here and you can see that we've got our quarter inch seam allowance. So that's why that overlap is so important. The next thing that we need to do is we need to uh, grab our um, larger red triangles, okay, or whatever color that you're using and we are going to match these up. All right, so what we will do is we will line up our triangles now these will be the same size okay we're lining up our point and our raw edges down the bottom now sometimes when you're working with triangles they can be a little bit um skew if because we've sewn them together and there's a little bit of give in them so you can see here that there is a little bit of stretch so if we go this way there's not much stretch and then there's on the bias we've got some stretch so now we need to be super careful of what we're doing um, now i am just making sure that my points are lining up here okay and that my red fabric is laying on top right sides together on this triangle that we've created here now if it's a little bit bigger don't worry because we are going to be squaring these up and then i'm just going to put a couple of pins and because we're working with a longer edge i'm going to put a couple of pins in just to hold that in place and then i'm going to repeat exactly the same with each component that i've got okay the main thing that i want to do is make sure that my point is lining up with the point of my um unit that i just created i'm not overly concerned about whether it's matching up perfectly because as i said i'm going to be um i'm going to be squaring these up okay and I can see that that is lining up really good. Okay, so now that we've got all our pieces put together, we're going to chain piece these through using a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're just going to let the feed dogs feed this through because we do not want to stretch or force our triangle because what will happen is We've got two triangles here that are on the bias and you can see there is a lot of given that so we just want to use our quarter inch seam allowance let the machine do the work let it feed through okay making sure that we keep true to our quarter inch and you can see there that i'm just guiding it to make sure it stays true to the quarter inch and i'm just letting that feed through pull out any pins as you're going because sometimes what that can do is distort your triangle um, especially on such a long um, stitching that we're doing on a triangle because it is quite a big one okay so you just want to take it slow keep your needle in the down position and just let it feed through I'm not stretching it in any way you can see there that it's just feeding through um, and I just remove my pins as I'm coming up to them And as you've seen there, there was no stretching, there was no pulling, no helping it get through your machine or anything like that. Now, just be very mindful of that, okay? Make sure your needle is in the down position and then just feed the rest through, okay? Okay. 
Okay, so now that we've got this, them sewn together, we are going to have to square these up. But first of all, I want to press my seams open. And I just finger press that for the first part of it. And then I will put the iron onto it. Again, I'm trying not to stretch my triangles or anything like that because I want to square them up and I don't want them to be all wobbly. Okay, so now that we've pressed them all open, we are going to square them up. And we're going to square these ones up a little bit different than our half square triangle. So we're going to lay it down like this. And we're going to take, because we've, we've got quarter inch seam allowances that we need to be mindful of here so we don't lose our point off our, um, off our little half square triangle there. So basically what I'm going to do is I've got this diagonal line here and I'm going to bring the six inch mark up to my fabric. Now I will have to trim some little bits off. but I want to make sure that I'm not taking too much off this bottom end here. So I'm just lining that up, making sure that my diagonal is going from corner to corner because that then lets me know that my square is correct. And when I cut it, I'll take that bit off. So you can see I've just taken a little bit off there. Okay, and then I'm just going to spin it around and then I'll line it up here. And I may need to take a little bit off, but in most cases, it's just the dog ears that'll come off. Okay, it might be just a smidgen that will come off and in some cases the doggies won't come off okay all right so that is how we square them up and you're going to repeat that with your other four now that they um, are all squared up we need to take our squares that we have and we're going to make four components like this okay and we will have one extra green square which is our center so set that aside and then just chain piece these through nice and easy right sides together quarter inch seam allowance and then we'll be ready for layout Okay, so once you have sewn those together, you're going to press, press those seams open. Okay, so we have now got all our components together. We've got four of our corner units and we have four of our green and white units. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to place our squares that we just sewed together, butting up to our center square okay like so and then all we're going to do is add into each corner let me just move some stuff out of the way into each corner we are going to add our cornerstones making sure that the big red triangle is going into the green like so okay now we have three rows to sew together so all we're going to do is place right sides together and then we will stitch that down. And as always, I will work from one side of the block. Okay, so we'll take our center square and lay it onto there. And then take that piece and lay it onto there. Okay, and you can see everything is lining up really nicely. We want our raw edges to be lining up both at the top and the bottom and the side that we're going to sew. If you need to, put a pin in. And then use a quarter inch seam allowance. To sew everything together and just again just let it feed through the sewing machine because we are still working with triangles and we want our needle in the down position and we don't want anything to shift on us okay and then we'll just take our next one Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the other side onto what we've already sewn. Okay, 
So again, just right sides together and making sure that our top and bottom raw edges are lining up and using a quarter inch seam allowance, stitch that down. Okay, so now that we've sewn all that together and we've pressed our seams open, we need to join our rows together. So basically the only seams that we need to match up are these center ones here, because as you can see, these seams here just go onto a straight edge on both bottom and top rows. So we don't need to stress about that. <clears throat> but the main one that we wanna focus on is these center ones. So just placing them right sides together and I'm going to use my fork pins for this. I'm going to lay them on together and bring up my raw edges so they are lining up. Now I'm not worrying about what's happening over here or here, I'm just focusing on this part here. And then I will get my fork pin and pop that in. And then I will do exactly the same over here. And pop my fork pin in. And now I can just line this up making sure that my raw edges are lining up. And I will pop a couple of pins in here because we are um, using, we've still got those triangles there. So I just wanna make sure that nothing's going to move. And I can see here that this is down too far. So I'm going to readjust over here. It just means that I haven't got it going up far enough. Yes, they are lining up that back in there and now you can see that that's lining up really nicely and I might have to do the same thing over this side as well okay my raw edges over here are lining up as well and I'm just going to pop a pin in there to hold that there and let me just see if this lines up I think I'm gonna have to adjust that just haven't come up far enough okay and I can see now that that is actually going to line up quite nicely and I'll put that fork pin in there okay and then I will just lay that on and pop a pin in. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to use my quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to let it gently feed through the machine without stretching it. And I will remove my pins as I come up to them because as I said, we're working with the triangle and I don't want to have that stretch it in any way. As I come up to my center seams, I'm not too stressed about those. I'm actually going to leave my pins in and I will just go slowly over. Okay, I can now remove my fork pins and I'll just move this out of the way, bring my iron over because we're going to press our seams open. So we've pressed that, now we need to add our bottom row on. And we're just going to do exactly the same thing again. So we'll lay that there, take our bottom row and we will line up our seam allowances. Okay, and pop up. Just make sure that I'm going in the right direction. We've pressed our seams open. We've got rid of any long threads that we don't need hanging around on our quilt blocks. But that is the assembly of the ducks and duckling uh, quilt block. And we've also got the nine inch one there as well. 
Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate you being here and clicking on this video and spending some time with me while we made the ducks and a duckling block. It is a pretty simple block to go together once you get the hang of working with your triangles and feeding them nice and gently through your machine. But as I said, that is it from me today. Have a wonderful day, everybody. But before you go, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel and set it to all notifications and then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts but as i said that's it for me today have a wonderful day and i will see you in the next video bye for now